I am, I'm so embarrassed. Okay, I, I, I get it, I get it, I get it. Um, but I, I just, I just gotta fess up, you know? So last video, um, it's an embarrassment really. Um, last video, I, I ended the video and I just, I just felt something was missing. And you know what it was? I didn't, I didn't do my signature clothes. You know the, I didn't do that. And I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed of myself. And I hope you'll forgive me. Moving along. So today I'm going to show you very quickly how you can install or load a data set into R. So if we were to go back here, we could, let's say you collected data on IQ data on 100 people, you could go in here and say C101, 85, blah, 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 blah. You could write it all down, but that would be absolutely ridiculous and we don't want to do that. So instead what you can do is you could actually let's say you are collecting the data through Qualtrics or something and then you export that to a CSV file or an Excel file or something like that. Well, it turns out that within R, you can load data sets. Whoa! That's amazing. So what I'm gonna do, if you wanted, and here is one of the big advantages of R Studio, which is what, one of the reasons why I think most of my students use R Studio instead of R, is you could import using a click and point and click function. So you go to file, import data set, and then depending on the type of file that it is, it is, you click on whatever you want. So I'm going to choose from CSV. And we get an error. Okay, so it looks like, so it's saying namespace rlang is already loaded, but greater than 2.0 is required. Um, long story short, what I'm going to try to do is reinstall rlang. So just like we learned in the last video, install.packages rlang. One or more of the packages that will be updated by installation of currently loaded restarting R prior to updating these packages is strongly recommended. Okay, do you want to restart prior to installing? Yes. Okay, unable to establish connection with R session. Wow, that's unfortunate. Okay, anyway. So it looks like it downloaded it. And let's go ahead and try that again. So import data sets and look at me, I'm saying how RStudio is so much easier. Okay, so it's working now. So if you have that problem, reinstall Arlang. I don't even know what Arlang does. I'm gonna go back to where I found my data sets. Or I'm gonna, I'm sorry. I'm going to go where I keep my data sets, which obviously isn't going to be the same for you. And I'm going to go ahead and load the birth weight data set. You can load whatever data set you want. And if I remember right, I will send, put a link in the description for um, the birth weight data set. And so that gives you a preview of what it's going to look like. And right here, here shows, it shows you the R code. Um, and then import, and then now it has the birth weight data set. So over here it creates a new window. I'm gonna minimize this because I don't need that. Shows you a new window of the birth weight data set, and up here that is unchanged. Now one thing you could do instead of having a point and click every time is you could go in here and copy the actual R code that created that and maybe you think the word birth weight is too long and so you want to create something else let's say or you want to create you want to store that information in a different object i like the word d or the letter d um, so i create all my data sets using that function d equals or d and i'll talk about that in a minute and so just because it's easier to type you know for example you go summary d it's much easier to write that than it is birth weight. I'm just a lazy program. I think all programmers are lazy. And so less words, the better. Um, now back to this. So uh, technically, if you are practicing good R programming skills, every time you assign an object, for example, D, 
um, is assigned the information in the birth weight data set. Uh, ours official guide says you should make assignments like that. Um, I'm kind of a rebel and I always go D equals. I use the equal sign. Why? Because it's one less character to type and it's just laziness on my part. And they both work. Um, there's reasons for favoring this. Um, it's more of a human factors issue because eventually we're going to get into double equal signs, which actually we may not even get to that because that's only relevant if you're a programmer. Um, and so I think that's the whole reason why they advocate for that. But I know the difference between a double equal and an equal. So I always go with equal. So anyway, that's how you would uh, load a data set into our studio again, file, import data set, find it. And then hopefully you don't have the R laying problems that I had, but if you do, now you know how to deal with it. So now if we were to do it in here, um, as far as I know, at least last I checked, there isn't a way to import a data set of oh, data manager uh, no that's something different um, so but it's actually very easy so all we have to do is go d equals uh, read.csv and then type the location of your file now here's the complication which may be a little problematic for some of you and that's okay um, what we don't know is, so R, when it starts, it has a default directory that it looks for objects from. And in order to find out what that is, we can say git wd, open close parentheses, run that command, and it's telling me that my default directory is users, Fife, Dropbox. Now, it just so happens that I told R to always load in the same place, which is that location. So I know it's always going to load there. Um, but if you didn't set that or you didn't know, then typing git wd would tell you where it is. And so now you got to think about where your file is in relation to that. And so my file would be school slash master documents slash... Oh, and I already forgot it. So I'm going to go back over here. So school, master documents, and then data sets. So I type data sets forward slash birth weight dot CSV. So um, the reason people like RStudio is you don't have to go through all that, figuring out where your working directory is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the other thing is if you, for example, forget to close the quote and you ran that, um, it wouldn't run. It's looking for the close quote. And so you might have problems and say, what the heck? Um, and yeah, it's okay. It's going to give you an issue, which that's okay. So now if I ran it and I typed everything correctly, it wouldn't have any issues. Um, but it requires a little more skill to do it on the R side than it does to do it on the RStudio side. Um, and so that's why some people prefer uh, working in RStudio. It's just easier to read in data sets. Now, another thing that you could do, because um, that's kind of a long path to type and kind of annoying and a little confusing if you're not familiar with folder structures and that sort of thing and type it in folder structures. Another thing that you could do is you could go to miscellaneous change working directory if you're on a Mac. If you're on a PC, it's actually kind of odd. I wish I could show you, but you have to click on this window and then go to file. And then there's an option called change dir. Um, but again, on a Mac, it's change working directory. And then what you could do is you could navigate to the folder where that data set is listed. And I've got the spinning wheel of death. Bleh. Okay, we're back now. So going back there, I could go to change working directory and then choose whatever folder I was in and click open. And then now it makes it easier to write the code. Now you can just say D equals read.csv birth weight.csv and that loads the data set. Now I'll show you a couple other commands while I'm here. Every time I load a data set, I like to make sure that things loaded correctly. And so you might go head D 
and that'll show you the first six rows. Now, a lot of people tend to have like a hundred or 200 or a thousand variables in their data set. So this actually looks really messy to do that sort of thing. Um, so it might not be as beneficial for some of you, but I like just doing head D. You can also go STR D, which I can't remember what STR stands for. And it will present the data like this and it will give you the different uh, columns that are in the data set and then the type of uh, object it is. So INT stands for integer. NUM stands for number. So the difference between an integer and a number is that there are decimal places in NUMs. And then factor is a special kind of object within R that um, you can think of it as categorical information. So this tells us that the low birth weight is a factor with two levels, low versus normal. So that's something that you could do with data sets. And I think that's about, oh, yeah, let me show you one more thing. So when you load in a data set, you've got all these different columns. And you might, for example, want to figure out what the mean is of circumference. Now, it seems intuitive that you should be able to go to mean head circumference. But it's going to say, error, head circumference not found. It can't find head circumference. And you're sitting there like, hey, dude, it's right there. I can see it. Why can't you see it? Or you're dumb. And if you thought that, that, that wouldn't be terribly far from the truth. R can't read your mind. And so um, there, R says there is no object called head circumference. And that is true. What you do have is you have an an object called head circumference that is stored within the object called D, if that makes sense. And so D is kind of a super object that stores other objects. We actually call it a data frame. And so if you wanted to compute the mean of head circumference, you have to say D dollar sign head circumference. So that tells R, look for the object head circumference within the object called D, if that makes sense. And if we ran that line of code, it would give us a new error, and that's okay. Hey, look at that, we are debugging. So this is saying that, hey, um, argument is not numeric or logical. Well, let's go ahead and look at this. And so now we could run that line of code to see what it looks like. Oh, it looks like I might have spelled it wrong. So I'm going to actually copy and paste. Yep, I spelled circumference wrong, or they spelled circumference wrong. So let me actually review, because this is a good opportunity for debugging. So here I said head circumference, and it says error, object head circumference not found. So that's actually an obvious error. It's saying, hey, I can't find anything called head circumference. Um, so uh, that told me that it couldn't find it. And then in this situation, we had mean D dollar side head circumference, and it says NA, which is not a value. Um, and it says warning message, argument is not numeric or logical, returning NA. So basically it's saying, I can't compute the mean of whatever it is you're trying to comp compute. That's what the message is saying. And so I'm saying, wait a minute, why can't you? And then so my next step was to say, all right, maybe I accidentally gave it something that was like a factor or something. And so that's why I did D dollar sign head circumference and then it, well, now that I spelled it correctly, it gives me something. But before, when I spelled it incorrectly, um, it said null. And null is, a, is R's way of saying, I don't, that object doesn't exist. And so that told me that I had just spelled it wrong. So now if I do that, it actually gives me a value. Wahoo! Okay, so in summary, we can load data sets in two ways. If we are using RStudio, we can go to the, oh, what was it? We can go to file, import data set, and then choose whether it's a CSV, Excel, SPSS, SAS, data, whatever. So we can import the data set in RStudio, which is a lot easier than doing it in R, or what we can do in R is we could either figure out what the working directory is and then read.csv and then navigate to that path, or what we could do is we could tell R to change to that path and then find it 
uh, based. And then, oh, tell R to go directly to the folder where the file is stored and then read.csv and then the name of the CSV file. So that's how you read in a data set in R and we will see you next time. And I'm gonna do one more to make up for last time.